And tell me about your own work um, that we can see downstairs, your performance and also the installations around it. Yes. So first in the exhibition, for me, there is a desire to create a collective or movement of art that goes beyond myself. So of course, as an artist myself, there is a certain thematic that touch me and impermanence is one of them. So downstairs we have the artwork with the wheelchair, um, the empty wheelchair of my father and his wedding suit, which is wet. And um, for me, it was really showing the absence when someone passes um, and the, the wetness, almost the, the tears that you, the needing of mourning and in, in a lot of Buddhist tradition, you have an altar to the ancestors. So next to it, kind of slightly hidden, there is an altar uh, with pictures of, of my father. And actually right after my father passed away, um, I've been discussing for a while with my husband to, to have a second child. And when he passed away, I was, I chose to still get pregnant, even in the midst of the, the mourning. And so I got pregnant two weeks after. And for me, it was a sense of like, to, to even in this era also, that there's a lot of, for example, birth strike or people who have a loss of hope and less people pe in the West, people having less children in a sense that the, there is still hope. I am conscious, consciously choosing to have a second child, even in this morning. And actually in my work, there is often the coexistence of birth and death. And I think in life, life is full of the coexistence of birth and death uh, at the same moment. So you see like the, the last scans that I had of my to be born child, um, because it's also to show that coexistence that also in a way, new life can't be born or be created or have the space to create a new future if we hold on to the ghost, if we if the if we never die to die is to honor god and to be born is to honor god we have to go through those doors universally regardless of where we come from and um through my mourning process and the pregnancy together um and the practice of prayer and meditation i want to accept the nature of impermanence but also the gift of impermanence that otherwise we'd be a, a, a earth full of ghosts, full of past, always looking back. And, um, and that is kind of also symbolized with the sandcastle and the water dripping. Because in the way, when you go to the beach and you see children making sandcastle with so much joy and then they get washed by the sea. And then it makes a sandcastle again and it get washed again. And, and I think that's a part of the nature of life is regardless how many times it get washed, and we can still have the joy of making a new sandcastle and hold dear also the inheritance of all the previous um, creation, the previous manifestation that happened before us. Um, and uh, actually on the walls, I've written some of the impermanent sutra. And uh, behind me are the five remembrance. And uh, also there's, I've been doing also a lot of painting using uh, material to try to remember or touch that sense of impermanence using sand, ashes, um, and creating that sense of movement of life, that there is uncertainty, and that's the only thing we can be certain of, is things are uncertain. And it's, a, it's something we have lost uh, being able to be in relationship with uncertainty. So here we are today, hoping that this artwork, these artwork from these great artists can help us navigate that sense of impermanence and uncertainty.